Hey, listen up. This is a 10 year old F10 generation BMW M5 with over 73,000 miles, a twin turbo V8 and a double clutch transmission. To some, this is basically a ticking time bomb waiting to empty out your wallet and make you regret the decision of ever buying one. But is that really all true? After all, this is still a BMW M car and had a price tag of well north of $100,000 when it was new. So what's it like now, this F10 generation M5? Let's explore it and find out. So the F10 BMW M5. This is probably the least popular M5 ever made, but I don't think it gets a fair shake because the F10 followed the E60 that came with a naturally aspirated V10 available with a manual. And we all know and love the E39 as possibly the ultimate M5. Now these M5s and for that matter, all BMW M cars had a simple formula, rear wheel drive, naturally aspirated high revving engine and sporty driving dynamics. So what did BMW do with the F10 generation? Well, let's say they kind of changed the formula around. Yes, it still came with a rear wheel drive configuration, but a twin turbocharged unit was used for the first time, which replaced all of the naturally aspirated engines that came before it. And the driving characteristics were questionable at best. So the change in formula kind of left a lot of dedicated BMW M fans scratching their head. But if you really think about it, the F10 generation M5 was a new chapter or a new foundational beginning to all M cars that would come after it. For example, the F90 BMW M5 basically takes this platform and turns it up several notches to give it supercar or even hypercar levels of performance. The new M3 and the M4 ditched the high revving naturally aspirated engines for twin turbo units and are now even offered with all wheel drive. So maybe the better words to describe the F10 BMW M5 are pioneer or maybe even visionary as opposed to sellout. Sellout or not, the F10 is no slouch on paper. The motor is a 4.4 liter twin turbocharged unit producing 560 horsepower and 500 pounds feet of torque. The 0 60 is in the high threes, low fours, and believe it or not, you could have gotten the F10 M5 with a manual even though basically everyone got it with a DCT. And then we wonder why the manuals are going away. Anyway, the other components of the F10 M5 are what you would expect in a performance car today. The suspension has adaptive dampers, the brakes are huge 15 inches with six piston calipers, and it's also got an active M Sport differential. Now quickly going over the interior, I think it's okay and you can certainly tell it's prior generation because of number one, the lack of screen and number two, the abundance of buttons. One thing I do like is the infotainment screen is blended into the dash very nicely. And speaking of the infotainment, it's obviously behind many generations of iDrive as now we're on version eight and this should be either version four or five, but I'm not really sure. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. These earlier versions of iDrive are great because they're really simple and easy to use. But of course, there's always a shortcoming with older technology. This does not have Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, but there are aftermarket reliable solutions that do build that into the F10 generation M5. Now, a couple other things before we move to the driving portion. This seat is immensely, immensely comfortable. The cushioning is great. The bolstering is good. And the overall seating position and feel you get in here is very luxury and uh, somewhat counterbalancing the stiff ride of the M5. And wrapping it up with the overall quality in here, I think it's pretty good. You have a nice mix of leather and stitching and then the wood here on the dash trim. Obviously there are hard touch plastics and hard touch over here in the center console, but this was really normal during this generation of car making. So with all that out of the way, now let's go to the drive and see what it feels like behind the wheel. All right, so let's see what this thing feels like to drive. Start, stop here up on the dash. Startup exhaust note is quiet. I am in comfort mode. Let's see what it, the exhaust sounds like. There's a rev limiter, of course. Let's just go straight into Sport Plus and see if there's a difference. Okay, well, there's the rev limiter off. I guess maybe at initial startup there is a rev limiter, but gone now <laughs> all right 
So let's put it in manual shift mode. Let's put it in M1, which I have configured to be in the raciest modes. So uh, steering feedback is Sport Plus, suspension is Sport Plus, and the drivetrain response is also in Sport Plus. Nonetheless, let's go ahead and test some of the acceleration for this F10 M5. And DCT is in the fastest shifting mode. Downshift to one. Let some of the traffic get by here. Stay in first gear. Get some more space in front of me. And let's go for it. Wheel spin. Oh, ah, real, real drive M cars. There you go. Brake. Uh, okay. Oh, the speed is missile-like. DCT shifts fast. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. That is faster than I thought it would be. Yeah, it really throws you back into your seat. And the power delivery is actually really nice as well. A little bit of turbo lag there. Uh, even with the hot V setup, it's difficult with these twin turbo motors, but there is no question about the speed of this car. This is a very, very quick car, and the throttle response uh, in Sport Plus is very, very sharp, nice, and linear power delivery for the most part. Uh, I guess that's the part that a lot of M fans used to the naturally aspirated motors are kind of looking for let's go back into first gear and the tail is really happy in this car good thing traction control is on or else it really i could feel it just holding down the rear end but man this thing is a missile really fast <laughs> no shortage of speed here that's for sure okay let me slow it down a little bit and let me tell you a little bit more about this thing Okay, so the speed is unquestionably quick. Uh, even by today's standards, this is a fast car. And by today, I mean 2023, in case somebody's watching this many years down the road. But still fast by today's standard. And then when you talk about some of the other elements, so the DCT, even though this is a prior gen DCT, this is kind of the last DCT BMW made before moving to the automatics. This is really good. Whether I'm driving a fast here, up shifts, down shifts, very smooth, very crisp. And it does, you do feel the DCT difference when you're driving this versus an automatic. There's definitely some more engagement and a better feel that I certainly prefer over an automatic. Now, uh, it's also good when you're driving it in the city for daily driving, nice and smooth. When you leave it in automatic and in the slowest shifting mode, it's almost unnoticeable the shift speed or the shift action, for the lack of a better term. Now, uh, the brake pedal, there's some improvement needed here. Uh, this doesn't feel like a sports car brake. Uh, I like a really sensitive pedal right at the top. I like a lot of braking power at tip-in, and this car doesn't really have it. I don't really know if all M5s are like this, but this specific example uh, needs, I don't know, if it was like this for all M5s, I would want a little bit more braking bite and some more power right at the top. The suspension, when you're just driving it around here in comfort mode, it is actually really nice. And part of that is, of course, the adaptive dampers and the specific tuning that BMW has given to this car. And in addition to that, this is uh, based off of the 7 Series platform from this generation. And on top of that, this seat is very, very comfortable. The cushioning is great. The overall seat comfort and the ride comfort is pretty good considering that this is an M product and it's a stiff riding car. Now, when you put it in sport and sport plus mode, it is very stiff, actually uh, stiffer than I imagined, but it is a very stiff riding car. And in, in terms of its steering feedback and handling, it is very heavy. Uh, I actually prefer the steering comfort in sport and that is even marginal because it does get pretty heavy in sport mode and sport plus is much like all other sport plus steering feedback 
in modern cars. It's too heavy. It feels artificial and fake. Uh, and in comfort mode, it's good. When you drive it on a daily basis, comfort mode is really nice. And as a 73,000 mile car, what do I think of it? I still think it's pretty tight and it does give you the sports car vibe. There's no lack of sportiness in this thing. Yes, it is a 10 year old car and some people look at cars that are uh, this old and think, oh, piece of crap. No, not at all. Not at all. This is still an M car and it still carries its nameplate and its badge with, with pride and, and gives you that BMW feeling. We have to remember that this car was out during the times when the Hellcat and things like that were coming out, the Charger and the Challenger. And uh, a comparison I saw was that this is a German Hellcat. And I agree with that analysis. And uh, I, just to add one thing on top of it, this is a more sophisticated Hellcat. Even at 73,000 miles, this feels properly modern. The motor is still very quick. The suspension, the overall feel that you get from a German car is absolutely here. And that old classic vibe of, of driving an older BMW is still somewhat alive here. And it's just a very refreshing feeling that some of this old, unique BMW touch or, or older generation cars uh, to still feel that in this prior new new generation of course with the f90 and that soon being replaced with the new generation 5 series so this is actually a pretty cool nostalgic feeling in this car so that's the f10 bmw m5 it's a really cool and totally underrated m car now i'm not making it out to be perfect because it's still a used german performance car with a lot of sophisticated parts that can break like the dct and all the technical things happening underneath the hood but when you consider the fact that you can get one of these things in the low 30s, of course, with some miles or in the high 30s, low 40s, for a really clean example, it's a great value proposition considering all the power and performance you're getting. Now, if you can somehow convince somebody to give you a warranty, absolutely go for it. So that's all I've got. If you've got any questions, please make sure you leave me a comment down below or send me a message on Instagram at DriveSteady. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Otherwise, thank you for watching this video. Until next time, drive steady.